Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn. If you're new to this channel, I'm a broadcast colorist and editor of many, many, many years. I've been using Adobe Premiere for about 24 years. I've been using DaVinci Resolve for over 13 years now. And in this episode, what I wanna do is help those who want to leave behind Adobe Premiere. I wanna start working in DaVinci Resolve. This episode is not gonna teach you how to use DaVinci Resolve. Think of this as a cheat sheet to help you understand all the things that you're really familiar with in Adobe Premiere and where are those things in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna do this in hopefully under 10 minutes. To learn Resolve is obviously a much bigger learning curve than that. I've got whole playlists on my channel if you want to check those out. There are tons of really good YouTubers out there giving really good free knowledge, but to teach you how to use DaVinci Resolve in this episode is gonna take a couple of hours at least. So I hope this helps and allow you to just open up DaVinci Resolve and just be a bit more confident of where things are. So the comparison is gonna be with Adobe Premiere 2022. As you can see, I've not used this for quite a while. These are like 11 months old since I've opened these projects. There's a couple that are newer. That's because I've just been testing out to do this episode for you. And so let's go and open one up. So this is the project area in uh, Adobe Premiere. I don't need to teach you that because you already know Adobe Premiere. That's why you're watching this video, I presume. And just to understand why I'm doing this now is because I'm gonna leave Adobe Cloud. I'm done with paying the subscription. So I thought before I do that, before I actually unsubscribe, I can get this episode out and it'd be the last time I open Adobe Premiere. So once we're in our project, I've just created this project and I've got exactly the same project in DaVinci Resolve. So all we've got is our familiar timeline here. Obviously you've got different workspaces up here. So this is how I've generally got mine laid out. And let's just go to sort of, if I press F on here, there's our familiar sort of dual screen. So I've got my video channels here, my audio channels, my cutaways, all that sort of stuff. And DaVinci Resolve behaves in exactly the same way. So let me go to the Resolve and open up a project for you. So here's Resolve. When you first launch DaVinci Resolve, you won't see this background stuff, but you will see this. And what you need to do is a project library. So you'll need to create a project library. And a project library is like a, a layer before the project, is where all the projects sit. You could have one project in a project library, you could have a hundred projects in a project library. You might have a project library per customer, per month, per whatever. You might just have one that you use Darren's project library forever. So I've got one here, it's just called YouTube 18. And in here, I've got a couple of projects sitting there. And what I'm gonna do is open up this untitled one, because when you first launch Resolve, it will be an untitled project double click, and we are now inside DaVinci Resolve ready to work. All right, so let's go back to Premiere. So in Premiere, you have a window up here where you can import all your media. So we can right click here, create a bin, and we can then import our media, either by import or just dragging and dropping from Finder. And it's exactly the same in DaVinci Resolve. So let me go into Resolve. What you've got down here are several different um, pages. Okay, you've got the media page, Okay, this is where you bring your media into DaVinci Resolve. So what we're looking at at the top here is literally looking at all the drives that are attached to my computer. Any clips that you want in DaVinci Resolve have to sit in the bottom half here, okay? So the top half is just looking at your network, your drives, and we need to just drag them into it. It doesn't copy it, it's literally just doing a link. So if we take for here, for example, our cutaways, we can drag, drop that folder down, and as it does with Adobe Premiere, when you drag a clip onto a sequence, it will say, do you want to change the sequence settings? This is doing exactly the same. It's saying, do you want to change the project frame rate, which is the same sort of thing. So I'm gonna say change, okay? And then what it's done is it's looked at the clips and gone, okay, these are HD clips and they're running at 24 frames per second. So let's just go back to Adobe Premiere. All those user settings that you're familiar with, okay, are up here in your preferences. Okay, so if I go to these, and you can go down all these things and set all your different preferences up, so what hardware you've got attached, what sort of pre-roll you want on your edits, all the things that make it sort of personal to you. All right, so let's go to Resolve. And in Resolve, the equivalent is in two places. You've got this little cog down here. This little house window takes you back to your project, so you can change projects there. And this one is your settings, okay? So at the top, we've got master settings, and this is where we set our timeline resolution, okay? And we've got our timeline frame rate here, which has just been changed to match my clips that I bought in. 
and the playback frame rate. Okay, this is the video monitoring side. So this is if I've got an external monitor, what settings do I want that to be? So I could be editing in 4K and monitoring in HD, for example. You don't need to worry about much else in here. Okay, when we come down to here, you've got things like color management. I'm not gonna look at that in this episode. I've got dedicated episodes all about color management. This is really about just getting you familiar. I want you to open DaVinci Resolve and feel like you know it as well as you know Adobe Premiere. So the only one you need to worry about is that top one, okay? The other preferences are up here and they are preferences and these are user preferences. So there's various different user preferences that you can do. This is exactly the same as scanning down all these preferences that you've got here in Adobe Premiere. All right, so that's where the preferences are. So let's have a look at how this works in DaVinci Resolve. So we've gone to our media page and to start editing, you need to be on either the cut page or the edit page. All these pages down the bottom talk to each other all the time. So in Premiere, if you want to do uh, audio mixing, for example, you'd open up Audition. In here, you've got the Fairlight tab. This is the audio tab. So you've got Media, where we bring our media in. We've got the Cut page and the Edit page. These are both editing pages. They are just different styles of editing. They both work all the time. You can choose just one or the other. The Cut page is probably more familiar to people who use FCP. The Edit page is definitely more similar to Adobe Premiere. The Fusion page is similar to After Effects, so this is where you would do uh, compositing and that sort of thing. The Color page is where you do your dedicated color grading. This is uh, what would be the equivalent of Lumetri. Uh, Fairlight is the audio mixing, so this is the equivalent of, of Adobe Audition. And you've got Deliver page here, which is the equivalent to Media Encoder. But they're all on one page, on one program. You just literally flick through them, and you can go to any page at any time, and all the edits talk to each other. So what I'm gonna do is open up a different project where I've actually got an edit created already. Okay, if I didn't have that, what you would do is take, say, your first clip, and exactly as you do in Adobe Premiere, you would just drag that down to the timeline, and there's your sequence started. Okay, that's, that's just happening. And it would match the sequence settings by default. All right, so let me open up an existing project, because this one here is exactly the same as the one I've got open in Premiere. So here you go. Now the first thing that looks a little bit weird, so just to point out, sorry, before I do that, if I go to the cut page, you see we've got exactly the same edit as well. It's just laid out slightly different. Personally, if you're coming from Adobe Premiere, I suggest that you don't use the cut page to start with. Just focus on the edit page. Just completely ignore this icon here and go straight to the edit page. You will be a lot more comfortable in this mode. What's kind of weird to start with is these icons are massive. I can't say that I'm a massive fan of that, but you do get used to it. But what you can do is click up here and you can change your video track height and your audio track height to make them just a little bit more familiar if you're used to Adobe Premiere. You might just prefer to work like that. And the keyboard shortcuts can even be the same as Adobe Premiere. If I click up here and go to keyboard customization, we can go up here. This is my own keyboard shortcuts here, but we can click down here and go to Adobe Premiere Pro, Media Composer, Final Cut, whatever you want. So I can just literally set these to be the Adobe Premiere keyboard shortcuts, and that will certainly get you going a lot quicker. All right, one thing that is very different in Resolve is that you can't move all these windows around as freely as you can in Adobe Premiere. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. These are pretty fixed windows, but what you can do is open and close them. So at the top, all the windows are identified with these little icons here. So if I'm gonna close down the effects, just click on here and they're gone. So this here is an exact copy of this page. So when you're in the edit page, you'll always see your media pool. So you don't even need this icon either. You can actually just work straight in the edit page and import your media from here. You can even go to Finder and literally just drag and drop your clips that you wanna work with straight in this window here. So that's the media pool. Let's bring back my effects. And what we can do, we can move these up and down. So here you can change the size of these. This is the inspector. So if I click on a clip like so, this is the properties for that clip. So this is where I can do my uh, zooming, my image scaling. You've got keyframing here. And this is exactly the same as in Adobe Premiere when you click on a clip like so, go to your effect controls, and you've got position scaling, rotation, all those things. It's exactly the same as that with the same keyframing capability. So you shouldn't be getting too lost with that one. So one thing, going from Premiere to Resolve, you probably will miss your workspaces and all the different settings that you have for that when you wanna quickly just change the layout, but it really is no big deal. In DaVinci Resolve, I can actually save my workspaces as well. So I've got my layout presets and I could save that as a layout. So I've got that down on one, and then I might want one where I don't see my effects and I can save that now. 
as Darren 2. And then I can just flick between the two and I could assign this as a keyboard shortcut if I wanted to. And there we go. Any audio mixing I want to do, you just do it on the edit page as you would in Adobe Premiere. But if you want to go a little bit further than that, as with Premiere, you would send it to Audition. With here, you just go to the Fairlight page and all my audio tracks are there. And we've got a ton of really powerful tools here ready to make your audio as perfect as you want it. So just going back to here, if you go to your sequence and go to sequence settings, which you'll find here. Okay, so this is where you've got all your sequence settings that you want to work with. The equivalent in DaVinci Resolve, as I mentioned before, if you go down here, there is your timeline resolution that you're working with. If you want to create a new sequence, go to your edit page. I've got a bin here called sequences. I just created these bins myself. To create one, right click, new bin, simple as that. And I could right click on here, say timeline, and I can create a new timeline. And at the minute, it's gonna use the project settings. If you don't want to use the project settings, you can click on here, and then you can choose what size you want it. So you might want a 4K one. Okay, you might even want to use a vertical resolution. So let's say you're doing Instagramming or you're doing uh, YouTube Shorts, you can set that to be a vertical resolution. So it's really super flexible. So I hope that helps in terms of the interface that really you've got you know, your inspector up here, you've got your dual windows here. You can work on a single window here as well if you want to. This is playing my timeline. And if I double click a clip, this is now my source viewer. And then back to my timeline. So you've got all the functionality that you're used to. All the effects are sitting down here. So there's absolutely tons of them. One of the things that I know people like with Adobe Premiere is the fact that you've got multiple plugins to work with from third party vendors. These are all now coming across to DaVinci Resolve. So Motion VFX, one of my absolute favorites. They have a ton of plugins that work straight with DaVinci Resolve. In fact, I've got some here. And let me just show you some. These are my Sapphire effects. You've got Sapphire, Boris. All these things work with DaVinci Resolve as well. Uh, let me just show you quickly the motion VFX. Here they are. So there's tons of these effects. So that is obviously the equivalent in here of looking at your effects tab. So when you want to export this, you're used to in Premiere, you would go to file and export media maybe as one of the options. And then you'd have this box open. This is effectively talking to media encoder in the background. And here you'd set all your settings and what size you want it, what codec you want it, all that sort of thing. In Resolve, really easy, you just follow the tabs down. So you've got your media to import it, your cut and edit page, like I said, just use the edit page. Go here to color grade, here's all the clips as they are on the timeline. And when you want to deliver, go to the delivery page and in here, and then you've got all the same options in here. So the video format is here, and these are just pull down menus. You've got all the codecs that you're used to in Premiere, audio codecs here, and file, so whether you want source name, or whether you want to do a single clip, or whether you want to export them as individual clips, all those options are there. And it is much faster than Adobe Premiere. It is miles faster than Adobe Premiere. This thing absolutely screams. And as I quickly mentioned there, you want to do color grading. Here is the color page. Everything's ready to go. You can just start color grading straight away. So let's just do a quick grade on this shot here. I'm just doing it super quick again. I'm not trying to show you how to use these tools properly. And if I go back to my edit page, there's the clip I was just on. It's this one here. And if I press D, I can disable that. So you see it's the right clip. And that's already color graded. The pages just talk to each other. It is really slick. So if you are an Adobe Premiere and you've been toying with the idea of coming over to Resolve, as many, many people are now, you've just got to bite the bullet and do it. It's I, I get it. If you've been editing in Adobe Premiere for years, it's so easy to just open up Premiere. You're really comfortable. You know where everything is. You know your shortcuts. You don't even have to look. There is going to be a little bit of a learning curve with DaVinci Resolve, but once you get it, you are not going to regret it. It's absolutely solid. There's so many good tutorials out there. There's so many good third-party plugins. It's much faster than Adobe Premiere. It's free, just download the free one. You don't need the paid one until you're comfortable, and even then you don't need the paid one. And don't forget, built into this is the color grading system that it started as, it's DaVinci Resolve. It's the industry leading color grading system. They do Hollywood feature films, blockbuster movies are graded on this system, and it's also got a fantastic edit suite built into it. So at least give it a go, download it, it's free, cancel your Adobe subscription, get on it. I've got a load of playlists in here. I've got some beginners playlists, so check out that. I'll put a link in the description. Get on board, you're gonna love it. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.